Right, how are we all doing? We all right? So, when I first came up with this idea, I thought this would be a really good idea to do. Uh, not knowing that actually I was going to be the first one to talk in 2017, so the added pressure wasn't particularly welcome, if I'm really honest, but you know, we'll roll with it. Um, so I'm Stefan, I'm 20 years old, I work at Sky as a front-end developer, I've been doing that now for 16 months or so, so I joined Sky at 18, which surprises still a lot of people today, uh, but you know, if you, yeah, go with that. So what I'm here to talk about today is sort of how I got into it, the issues I've faced, and ultimately why all those issues don't matter, and why I still enjoy what I do today, having been through probably some really, really crap times, but it is what it is. So the first thing I want to talk about is school and college. It's an interesting place. It was quite poor for me. I was kind of quite an introvert at the time. I didn't really talk to anybody, and the only thing I had was sort of bedroom coding, if you want to call it that. Um, and you know, I, I struggled. I did not enjoy it. I tried to find some things to do, but I couldn't. I never got into it. And then I started year 10, and I started to do sort of front end development as a hobby. It was the only thing I ever really enjoyed. Uh, this came through coming through sort of IT as a GCSE, but you know, I didn't really enjoy it. It wasn't based on development, which you know, was a bit of a disappointment, but you know. A year later, they decided to do computer studies, and I thought, oh, all right, okay, we're going to be that way. But the big struggle at college was people have a lot of perceptions and a lot of opinions on people who do development, and my year was particularly poor at it. They had a lot of opinions that same when I was geeks, and that you know kind of put me off this idea of you know I want to do this as a career. You know, people are going to hate me for doing this and things like that. So already, you know, I was having issues. I, you know, at one point I was going to say sack it off. I want to do mechanics or something stupid like that. If you do mechanics, I'm sorry, but <laughs> um, yeah. But so that was, you know, my first problem. And then I don't know if it's just my school, but I was always pushed to do sort of academia. So that'd be A levels or university. Again, it wasn't for me, but there was very heavy focus on this. Um, I remember when I was looking at doing college or A level, uh, there was loads of workshops for A levels, maths, English, science, all that stuff. But there was never anything for college, so it was kind of a, okay, I do this on my own accord, I go out to different colleges, see what's what, do interviews and things like that. So I never had, I never felt like I had the full support school, which for someone quite young is quite difficult. The only two people I had were my parents, and they kind of stood me through that and kept me going. You know, I could never go to a teacher, I could never say, you know, how do I do this? How do I go for an interview? Because they were like, why are you doing college? It's not worth it, do A-levels. I'm like, all right, okay. And we, you know, that was that, and it kind of just kind of got really demotivated by it all. And like, and like it says here, it was just a lot of unpleasant noise. Every day I'd go about, oh yeah, do A-levels, do this, do that. Even my friends were saying, well, what are you doing going to college? And that's just horrible to hear. So what do you do? You just ignore it, ultimately. Um, you do what you want to do. It doesn't matter what other people think. You know, I, I hated academia. I thought it was just a like, nonsense, to be honest. I went through a vocational course. You know, it helped me get my way. The reason I didn't go to uni was because I felt that it was kind of out of touch with what was going on. But my main focus was front-end development. And as some of you may know, front-end development doesn't stand still. Every day there seems to be something new. So university really wasn't the place to go. It's good for theory, but for a practical day-to-day -day use, maybe not the best idea. I know a few of you have done interactive media at uni, and I don't mean to offend, but it's just something. Yeah. So the next one, and the next issue I had was actually finding work. Uh, I felt like I was ready to go into work quite early. I spent five years doing this at home. So it's like, okay, you know, maybe try and get a Saturday job, which I know some people have done, and they've kind of benefited from it. I know one of our designers at Sky started through Saturday work, on his way up. So I thought, hmm, okay. Yeah, this is a position where I want to go. I've, all, I've wanted to work since I was 16. I've always enjoyed this idea. I was always quite practical. Like I said, never really enjoyed academia. The one issue I had was experience. Now, a lot of Saturday jobs seem to still want a year of experience. I didn't have that, and this was kind of a struggle. And I'm not even kidding, but this is an interview I had for a Saturday job. Uh, have you got any experience? No, it's portfolio work. Goodbye. We shook my hand and I was told to leave. I'm not joking. This was just for a Saturday job. And, you know, again, you might have made, what do I do? So I had to take a very different approach and get that experience by all means. 
and that was an apprenticeship, which I'm doing at the moment, and very close to finishing. Uh, I got that in Skype, and I've been there for 18 months now, getting that experience that I needed. Which brings me on to getting a, getting, oh no, there we go, getting a foot in the door. So when I joined Skype, and this is the only time I will actually mention Skype, so it was a big moment for me confidence-wise. Uh, it was quite an intense process to get in it. There was sort of a five-stage process, which after talking to some of our actual senior developers, they didn't have to do this intensive it was five steps. There was a novel questionnaire, which was like a five-page application form talking about all sorts of random stuff. To this day, I still don't get the relevance of. We had to do a telephone interview, which again, asked me some really weird questions, which I won't go into. I then did an assessment day and a coding assessment. And then I also had to do a Skype interview because decisions were getting quite close and they also had to make an actual decision. Five different stages to decide whether you know this was the if I was the right person. And thankfully I did. Uh, that was a really big win. For me, it's you know it, it was so difficult. It was five months worth of applications, phone calls, interviews, I had to go travel out to London, which I'd never done on my own before. And uh, that was all very scary. But to me it was an epic win. No. So yeah, but obviously moving to a company as big as Sky and as precious, there's always going to be issues and that's what I'm going to go into now. And one of the first things was adapting to new things. Now, as a bedroom coder, I was very s separated from new things. I always kind of stuck to old habits, which I was always made aware of. So Sky and all this new modern technology and things like that, it was always going to be quite a big ask. And I have a quote here, and I asked someone, what's the most difficult thing you found when you first joined Full-Time Work? And theirs was adapting to a tech stack without it being overwhelming. I completely agree with this. Adapting to the tech stack in Sky was possibly one of the most stressful six months of my life. Um, there's so much going on, front-end development doesn't stop, it's trying to learn. Things like stylish preprocessors, there are four different preprocessors that I had to look at. New ways of doing DOM, React, JavaScript. Just kept going and going and going. And to one, I was staying up at sort of 3 a.m. trying to learn these things, which was never really beneficial. Um, I'd come into work tired, kind of get demotivated. Okay, I don't know a lot. Go through the same process again, 3 a.m. So on, and just kind of got exhausting after a while. But I have to say, after it, it's a lot of fun. If you find a good method to do it, getting over this is a lot of fun. And the quote I now have after this, and as I said this to you, another front end developer we have in our tribe, it's like learning piano, but every so often someone decides to move to the uh, actual notes around. So, you know, it's tough. And even now, you know, actual applications, there's new stuff turning up that I didn't know what the hell it was. And it's another three weeks of actually learning it, and then it changes, and we're like, oh, we drop it. I mean, another quote I saw was, okay, I've learned React. But then instantly want to move to Angular 3. So just stick to what you know. That's it. It's incredibly beneficial. Next issue I had with confidence. This links quite well to the actual tech stack because my confidence was so up and down with it. You know, at some points I feel like I couldn't do it. At some points I couldn't. I could just. You know, I was on a high. And I think, like, okay, I'm learning loads of new stuff, and you know, that confidence kept rising. When it's high, you feel better. You work better. It was just more comfortable with that. For me, this was really important. It was kind of like a wave. You know, it, you know, the wave just increased, increased, increased. And I was just enjoying it. You know, I'd moved to a new spot. Things were great. I was doing loads of work. It was, it was just enjoying it. Like, meeting new people, learning new things. And you know, that's great. You love that. And you thrive off of that. And you know, for me, it was just incredible. And then a couple of things started to happen that, you know, personal issues wise, Things started to come down at work. A couple of people said something at work that, you know, kind of affected me quite deeply, and it started to feel like. And for me, I didn't feel like myself and my confidence was low. And I don't know if this is sort of a, just a me personal thing, but I didn't feel like me. So I come into work, okay, and go, all right, okay, got this to do. You know, feel like I couldn't do it. Then I'd go home, try and learn something new, come back in, still feel like I can't do it, go home. And this happened for about six months again. And for six months to have very little self-esteem or confidence is really tough place to be and getting over it was quite the challenge. 
So improve, improving confidence is incredibly important. And for me, self-love is the best way to prove your self-esteem. And for me, there were sort of four different methods I used. Uh, one of those was trying something new. So at the time when I struggled, I actually found out that I actually had a really good love for snooker. I would go to Northern Snooker Centre, I'd go play every day just to kind of get over certain demons I had. And it was really enjoyable. And I felt better about myself after going every day. It cost a lot of money, but it was worth it. And you know, for me, that was important. You know, talk to people as well. Talking to people is probably one of the most therapeutic ways to get over confidence for me, and it may be for other people. You know, telling people what is wrong, you know, personally, they can always help you. I've been very lucky that the people I work with were very helpful. They helped me get over certain issues I have. And, you know, if it wasn't for them, I don't know where I'd be now. And I know that's kind of a really dramatic thing, and everyone says that. It's like, well, but it's important, and it's actually really quite truthful. If I didn't have certain people, who knows, maybe I wouldn't be in Sky, which is kind of a you know. Right. Imposter syndrome. I'm not going to talk about this for very long, but it's shit. Honestly, it's possibly one of the worst things ever. You feel like a fraud, you feel like someone's going to find you out, and you feel like you don't deserve to be there, which, you know, it's, it's awful. It really is awful. You feel like every day you tell someone something new, you know, you, you help them, and you feel like, well, what if they don't believe that? What if they go and ask someone else, they tell someone different? They look at you and say, OK, you don't know. And as an apprentice, this is actually quite difficult because it's got to a point now where I help newer people who come to the business with stuff. And it feels like you know, they're older than me, they've got experience elsewhere, and yet I'm still helping them. But do they really believe what I'm saying? And you know, that starts to play on your mind, and it keeps going and going and going. And eventually, it will just break you down. This lingers. Now, this isn't just something that comes and goes and disappears forever. This is something that comes back, I find. Um, it's happened to me a few times. I've come in and felt, you know, is someone just going to say to me, you know, have you just got, have you copied this off Stack Overflow or something? Which, as a developer, is quite a common occurrence, and I'm sure we've all done it. Um, but I f it feels like that for every single piece of work I do. It doesn't feel like it's mine. I look at it and think, no. Having to overcome it. It's important to come over this. You won't regress if you continue to suffer from this heavily. Because you don't believe that if someone says to you, OK, we want to give you this role, take it. And you say, no, because I don't deserve it. Like, that's a really shit idea. Because ultimately, you're going to stunt your progression. You're going to keep going in the same circle over and over again. I, you know, at me in an apprentice level, sometimes I felt, OK, I won't go associate because I'm not good enough or I don't deserve it and things like that. So overcoming imposter syndrome is important. Now, having done some of the work I do, I can safely say, you know, OK, maybe I, I, you know, I can do that progression. And I can continue forward with my career. Because you know, that's important to me. You know, it makes more sense you know, as I grow through the company and as I grow in experience. I'll need to move on, and I'll need to be confident with doing that. Saying no. Now, for me, <laughs> I am appalling at saying no, um, which came back to bite me on the ass a couple of times. Uh, you know, we've all been this. We've all done this. This is, a, this is not something new. Everyone does this when they first start. I can safely say that most of you in this room have had this problem. You, you, know, you commit to things that you just can't do. Um, and I ended up like this fella. Up until 2 a.m., maybe 1 a.m., 2 a.m., doing sky work because I'd committed to just to far too much. I, you know, I, was, I had like three weeks worth of work to do in a week. You know, people keep coming to me and say, can you do this, can you do this? And I'd say, all right, Stefan, you have to say no. And I'd say, can I do this? Yes, fine. You know, you did it anyway because you know you commit to things. And at my, at, you know, for me, I want to make an impression. So saying yes is the best way to do that, and getting work done is the best way to do that. But ultimately, you can do too much. People start to expect too much, and you can't meet those expectations, which actually looks really poor on you. And for some, you know, you have to say no at some points because you start to lose time. Which brings me on to this. It's about keeping your priorities first. What you feel is important should stay as the most important thing to you, whether that be work, whether that be family, whether that be social life or whatever. For me, I started to lose priorities within work. You know, I started to spread myself too thinly. People were asking me for things, and I couldn't cope with it. So I just had to stop. I put my priorities first, which was the project I was on. 
you know, people from other squads were coming to ask me for stuff, and I just, I just can't, I just cannot continue with this. You know, I've got this major piece of work to do, and they'd still keep messaging me, and I just had to get quite vigilant with them. And that's, that's how bad it can get. I you know, literally, I had an Evernote document that, oh, it was insane, and I don't ever want to be at that unsustainable level again. <sighs> anyway, after these sort of freaky problems, and they were difficult to get over, but they build you as a person. You learn a lot more when you do things wrong than when you do things right. When you think things are right, right you don't really change anything. You think, yeah, OK, I'll ride this wave. If you get them wrong, you learn from them, and you build yourself as a person. Like I said before, I've had loads of problems. Yes, true. Yeah. I've committed to work I can't do. I've stayed up until 3 a.m. I've been exhausted. I've literally said to myself, I don't want to go into work. I'm going to work because I have to. But yeah, I didn't enjoy it. But I love my job. I've met so many great people, some of you who are here tonight. I've learned a lot, and I've joined a community that is possibly the best community in this world. I get to come and talk to beautiful people like you and enjoy it. And after everything, it actually finally gave me the confidence to message Josh just after Christmas to say, yeah, I want to come talk about this. And he said he was very happy to help. And I've ended up here now. Thank you. Thank you.